With the Call of Duty franchise already a rousing success on the PC, Activision wasted no time in bringing the shooter to the consoles. A little over a year after the original, and a mere two months after United Offensive, Call of Duty Finest Hour released on the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. It was the first and last Call of Duty developed by Spark Unlimited, who later went on to create Turning Point, Fall of Liberty, and Legendary. Welcome to Stalingrad. You're about to begin the greatest moment of your life. The Germans have lost hundreds of tanks and planes. Hitler's brutalized hordes are now advancing towards Stalingrad over mountains of their own dead bodies. Our Bolshevik party, our nation, our great country have given us the task not to let the enemy reach the Volga and to defend the city of Stalingrad. Divided into three campaigns like its predecessor, players first controlled Private Alexander Sokolov of the 13th Guards Rifle Division during the Siege of Stalingrad. The division served as the focus for the Russian campaign in both the original Call of Duty and Call of Duty 2. After capturing a German bunker, you team up with Lieutenant Tanya Pavlovna, a skilled sniper, and work together to create trouble for the German forces. You've got a clear shot. What are you waiting for? An explosion. We need something to cover the sound of the rifle. And if I shoot enough of these Germans, they'll send a tank to come looking for us. Then we'll need to cover our sapper on the street so he can place a landmine in its path. This is it. Always try to shoot the officers first. Players eventually control Pavlovna herself and take on the task of clearing the sewers and defending a makeshift T-34 tank factory from a Nazi onslaught. The focus then shifts to tank commander Nikolai Badenov. Following some skirmishes with German resistance and a rendezvous at headquarters, players once again had to navigate a column of tanks through the besieged city, retaking Red Square, and delivering a radio to a team of Soviet spotters to relay artillery coordinates. Column is a junkyard now. Thank you, Lieutenant. This has been one hell of a day. The Russian campaign culminates with the player taking part in Operation Little Saturn and the raid on the Tatsinskaya airfield, where you destroyed the remaining fleet of Nazi planes and forced a German retreat. The British campaign was significantly shorter than the other two and played out in North Africa. Assuming the role of Edward Carlyle, and under the command of Sergeant Starkey, players performed sabotage on fuel and supply depots in an attempt to cripple the forces of General Erwin Rommel, otherwise known as the Desert Fox. The British campaign ended with the player rescuing a cartographer who claimed to have maps that would allow the British to flank Rommel and drive him out of North Africa. It's about time you chap showed up. Well, we had a few errands to run. Hey, Carlyle, were you just gonna leave me out there? <laughs> Sergeant Chuck Walker was the main character in the American campaign, which followed the 1st Infantry Division during the capture of Aachen. Players would also prevent the German destruction of the Remagen Bridge, which would prove to be instrumental in the Allied advance further into Germany. One mission in the American campaign featured tank commander Sam Rivers, the leader of a squad of African-American soldiers in the 761st Tank Battalion, which was part of General Patton's Third Army. Many of the characters in Finest Hour were based on actual soldiers. The sniper Tanya Pavlovna was largely inspired by Tanya Chernova, a Soviet sniper present at the Siege of Stalingrad, and later played by Rachel Weiss in Enemy at the Gates. Tank Commander Sam Rivers was based on Reuben Rivers, a staff sergeant in the 761st Tank Battalion who received a Purple Heart and the Silver Star for his actions in World War II. He was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor by President Bill Clinton in 1997. The music was composed by Michael Giacchino, 
and the game was narrated by Dennis Haysbert, who's best known for his portrayal of President Palmer in the Fox television series 24. By Britain and France proved no deterrent as the Nazis invade their European neighbors to the north and west, while extending their reach eastward towards Russia's critical oil fields. Sergeant Starkey was voiced by Brian Johnson, lead singer of the band ACDC. If this last charge goes off, Fritz will be completely out of power. All right, get ready to break and ready to dash. The single-player campaign made up the bulk of the experience, but there was a multiplayer option in both the PS2 and the Xbox versions, both of which supported 16-player matches. Finest Hour was met with mixed reviews, but it was unanimously agreed upon that the game was inferior to its PC counterparts. Stiff controls prevented it from achieving the pace and the intensity of PC games and later console entries, and neither the single nor the multiplayer modes were particularly well received. A year later, the second console entry, Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1, would release on the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. It was developed jointly by Pi Studios, Treyarch, and Grey Matter Interactive, the latter of which would eventually merge with Treyarch. Pi Studios would later contribute to the development of both Call of Duty 3 and Call of Duty World at War. Unlike previous Call of Duty games, Big Red 1 was not divided into three campaigns. The story almost exclusively followed the exploits of members of the U.S. Army's 1st Infantry Division, nicknamed Big Red 1 after their shoulder patch. Also known as the Fighting First, players controlled a single soldier for the majority of the game. Beginning with the invasion and liberation of North Africa, players took part in battles in Oran, Tunisia, and Kasserine Pass both on foot and in an M3 Stuart light tank as part of Operation Torch and the Tunisian campaign. Afterwards, you assumed the role of a gunner on a B-24 Liberator above the Mediterranean. The mission stands out as one of the highlights of the game. Following the liberation of North Africa, the Big Red One landed on Gila Beach in Sicily, kicking off the Italian campaign, codenamed Operation Husky. Players would then move east towards Piano Lupo, and then take part in the battle for Troina. The final part of the game began with the Allied landing on Omaha Beach in Normandy, France, with the player providing mortar support for U-boats and then clearing a path for Allied vehicles. After the invasion, the Big Red One marched through Belgium and into Germany, fighting German opposition at Eilendorf Ridge near Buchholz, and finally on the Siegfried Line. Damn, stop! Haven't eaten nuts since we left the ship. Hey, you know, my dad 
dad runs a deli back in the Bronx, makes the best pastrami sandwiches you'll ever eat. Brooklyn, you ain't quite right. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like your sister, huh, you friggin' hayseed? Can it, you two? Stay on the ball. This ain't boot camp. Featuring numerous characters from the main Call of Duty 2, Big Red 1 had many actors from the HBO series Band of Brothers reprise their roles. Michael Cudlitz, Frank John Hughes, Richard Spate Jr., James Medeo, Ross McCall, Rene Moreno, and Rick Gomez all returned. Actor Steven So, who played Private Roland Roger, adorned the front of the box. Also returning were voice actors Nolan North of the Uncharted series and Yuri Lowenthal, who voiced the Prince of Persia in Last Generation's trilogy and the recent Forgotten Sands. Mark Hamill provided the narration, and period footage was provided by the Military Channel. Film composer Griam Rivel wrote the music, making it his only contribution to a video game. The members of the Big Red One have been ordinary soldiers tasked with truly extraordinary deeds. Their commitment to success at all costs is reflected in their motto. No mission too difficult, no sacrifice too great. Duty first. Despite sharing many elements with its PC and Xbox 360 counterparts, Big Red One failed to reach great heights. It was, however, considered an enormous improvement over Finest Hour in terms of gameplay, with the Xbox version being the most well-received due to the multiplayer, which was similar to the multiplayer seen in United Offensive. Big Red One would be the last Call of Duty game on a 6th generation platform, because two weeks later, the Xbox 360 version of Call of Duty 2 was released, followed by the launch of the console itself on November 22, 2005. This also marked a turning point in the series when focus shifted from the PC to next-generation consoles. 